Hello Bakers, today I'm gonna be showing you how exactly to create a scant asset. So I made this rock, you can see that there are some parts that are missing information or the scan is uh, not a very good quality. I used a recap for calculating everything. I've been using it quite a lot the last uh, month or maybe two months already and uh, it's been giving me quite good results. So I wanted to show you first, this is our calculated mesh, you can see that I still didn't clean it up. I'm going to get it inside 3ds Max and from there we are going to clean it. Also I'm going to add it in ZBrush where we are going to rebuild the rest of it and at the end we are going to use Substance Painter to recreate the missing textures. Now that we imported everything inside 3ds Max, I just deleted the parts that I don't need, like the grass that you saw on the side, so that our mesh is more clean. We are going to export it as an FBX towards ZBrush, where we are going to edit everything and reveal the parts that we are missing. Here, the first thing that we need to do, as you saw, the mesh is open on the bottom, so we are going to go into Geometry, and I'm going to use DynaMesh in order to close it, and also DynaMesh is going to keep our geometry nice and clean through the whole process of sculpting. You can see that once we calculated the DynaMesh, we are going to lose our texture, but this doesn't matter because we are anyway going to create new UVs. Now we can just start sculpting. I'll be using one of the default brushes, a clay builder, and once we get to the point where you can see that there is some issue with the geometry, I'm just gonna be clicking on the side, so I rebuild the DynaMesh. This way we are going to have a good clean topology for our high poly and as well after that for our low poly. The idea when rebuilding a mesh is to create the shapes that you need for your scene. In my case I needed the bottom part to be kind of more complete so that I can put everything on the floor and as well I wanted to rebuild some of the details on the back side that I didn't manage to scan. I'm also gonna use smooth brush to smooth out some of the surfaces and as well a trim to make some of them more flat. And once we are happy already with our result, I'll use the standard brush to grab a region and create a displacement texture for it, which we are going to use after that to paint some of the places where we are missing detail. Now with our details captured, I can just go around the object and fill in the details that we were missing. I'll scale my brush to be smaller or bigger so that we can get some more larger details and also some finer details here and there. Once we are done rebuilding the parts that we needed, I'm going to export everything and bring back the low poly and the high poly inside 3ds Max where we are going to back our diffuse from the scan to the low poly and after that bring everything to Substance Painter to finalize our textures. Now that we finished the model and we fixed all the places that we were missing some information, it's time for us to bake the diffuse texture from our scanned asset to our new model. I'm going to place them both exactly on the same position and I'm going to select our low poly model. After that, I'm going to hit the zero key on the keyboard and render to texture. Here, I'm going to select projection mapping and we are going to pick the scan asset. For the mapping coordinates, I already created UVs on channel one, so I'm going to use the existing one and we are going to scroll down where on the output, I'm going to add so that we bake from our node an albedo map. Once again, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to put for our resolution 496 by 496. Now the only thing that's left for us is to click the render button and we are after that going to have already our diffuse texture baked from our scanned model on the new clean UVs on our ready asset that we are going to use in our scene. Once we finish baking our texture, you can see that there are some places where it needs fixing or we are missing some information. This is why I'm going to get everything inside Substance Painter. I'm going to bake the normal map from our high poly that we created inside ZBrush. And after that, I'm going to apply the texture that we just baked. Now inside Substance, I'm going just to create a new file. 
I'm going to leave the resolution for the document to be 4K and after that I'm going to select the low poly model that we just created. We are going to click OK. And now the first thing that I'm going to do is to import our texture that we just baked from 3ds Max. I just dragged and dropped our texture. I'm going to select that it's a texture and also I'm going to select that it will stay in our current project. Now I'm going to go to texture setup settings and here inside bake mesh maps I'm going first to select our output size to be the same as our texture resolution and from high definition mesh I'm going to select the high poly that we created inside ZBrush. There are a few things that we don't need from the list to be baked. One is ID and the other one is thickness. And now I'm going to bake all the details from our high poly to our low poly model. Once our baking is done, I'm just going to click OK. We are going back to our layers and I'm going to create a new fuel layer. For this fuel layer, we want to use only the bake texture that we created inside 3ds Max. So I'm going to scroll down and we can remove metal, roughness, normal and height. And now I'm just going to drag into our base color slot the texture that we baked inside Max. As you can see, a big portion of the rock already fits perfectly, but there are still some places that we need to fix. I'm going to create a new layer for drawing on top of it. And one of the easiest way to fill the places where we are missing some texture information is by using our clone stamp. There is one more thing that we need to set up before starting to clone our texture and fixing all the missing information. And this is to put our layer from normal to pass through. Now by clicking the V key, I can grab information from one place of the rock and after that, paint it into some of the other places. Thank you for joining me in today's video, leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming videos, see you next time.